question I often get when doing presentations and discussing Cannonball in general is, can the Cannonball record be beaten? Now, my wife gets after me because she says Ken is Barbie's husband and can <laughs> is how you say whether or not something is possible. But you know, I wasn't going to say it. I'm from Maine. We say Ken. Can it be done? Um, even though I live in the Midwest now. And it's a very, well, it's, it's a loaded question, right? It, it, every time somebody has set the record, there's always been a discussion of can it be beaten, right? So the Cannonball Times back in the 70s and 80s, people said that those could never be beaten because of the increase in traffic in modern times and cell phone usage and uh, police anti-speeding detection equipment, et cetera, et cetera. So, but we, we proved that to be completely false. We obliterated the record, not just us. I mean, Alex Roy and then Ed Boley and, and then us. So the record has been obliterated many, many times over. But the reason the question has more weight to it now is the most recent Cannonball record was set in 2020. It was kind of at the tail end of the pandemic era traffic, but it still happened during quote unquote COVID. So there was a severe reduction in traffic. There was less enforcement depending on the state. Other states had more enforcement, but there's a definitive advantage that we will likely never see again in history. We ho Hopefully. We I hope so. Not Hopefully like to have a situation like that happen again. Did you feel that on your run? Less traffic, less, you know. For the first half of the run, yes. When we got out to the West Coast, it was basically like normal. Okay. And it was almost a vacation rush hour. So in terms of the ideal pandemic era run, we didn't get it, right? Um, we probably could have gone an hour, hour and a half faster if we had a perfect run during the lockdown, but we didn't. So there is time on the table for a perfect run. Um, but let's be honest, there's a number of factors that have changed since then. One, traffic has increased back to at least normal levels. I don't have the data on this, but I would opine that it is higher than normal because I think less people are flying just in general. And just my anecdotal experience is out on the roads, the traffic is the worst it's ever been. Yeah, my butt dial says there's a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> butt dial, butt but, dino. Your butt goodness. dino. Oh. Goodness gracious. Butt you dial is can, what you do say, to yeah. an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> butt <laughs> dino is what you do with a car after you mod it. That's why you got to get them numbers out of there, Doug. Um, right. Yeah, it just, it feels so much more congested all the time. I was driving in a, not a rainstorm, but some pretty significant rain up here over the weekend, and I was shocked at how many people were on the highway. Yeah. Yeah. And not only that, um, there are, every year that goes by, there's more strict enforcement, there's more strict penalties, there's more laws passed, there's all sorts of uh, different things that happen. But the, the real question is, can the cannonball record that exists currently set during the pandemic be beaten in a non-pandemic era, right? Yes, there's time left on the table for a perfect run, but is a perfect run different? Does it look different now with full traffic and even more traffic than previously? Also, there was a hiatus on construction projects during the pandemic. And I would even say that when we went the first time in 2019, there was kind of a bunch of big ones coming to an end and kind of a, a natural break. And then post pandemic, there was all these pent up construction projects that had to be done. And it's just construction everywhere now. So it's almost like everything's conspiring against somebody that wanted to go out and set a cannonball record. And the anecdotes are not just that. The data is there. Since 2020, nobody has gone sub 30 hours verified. There's somebody that claimed to go 27 and change solo. It's an interesting claim. We're sorting through the data. Uh, anyway, there's, there's no verified runs under 30 hours, right? So let's just say that the, the pre 
pandemic record, 27 hours and 25 minutes. Nobody's even come close to that. So is it possible? Are you asking me for my opinion right now? Yes, I am. I, As a non-cannonballer, what do you think? I think, <laughs> yes. Just it, at some point, probably in our lives, somebody is going to find a way to do it. But I feel like we have reached a point, and especially after talking with you and with Arnie and being around the community so much more, that all of the things that lent themselves to the records being broken like they were since the 70s are no longer going to be a thing. So like you have, t- you guys have talked so much about how the, you chose the right cars, the Mercedes specifically made for the Autobahn can handle like the big fuel cell is like reliable at that speed has the, the distance. Like what, what does that have? Is that a V twin turbo V eight yes. in that? Are those being made anymore? It's all a bunch of four cylinders, but you could buy one of those. You don't you have could. to use a new car, but there's going to be I no advancement. The E63 is just as good. There's advancement in horsepower for sure. Cars are not getting less powerful. They're just different. But they're getting heavier and less efficient. Potentially. Heavy is not the disadvantage you would think it is on a cannonball. We use heavy cars on purpose because then the suspension is beefier. They're made to handle their weight already. So when you add a few hundred pounds of fuel, it's not that big of a deal on a percentage basis. If you put a few hundred pounds of fuel into a regular sports car whose suspension is designed to be nimble and designed around a light car, all of a sudden you're like changing the fundamentals of that car. But you take a heavy Audubon cruiser that's made to go 200 miles an hour with five people in it. Okay, well, you have three people and two people's (laughs) worth of gas. (laughs) I just feel like the the advancement, and that's why I do think it will be broken, is I am probably wrong, and I'm thinking of things in an older mindset, but I just think all of the stuff that led Alex Roy and Ed and you and Arnie to set these records is just going to be different, and I think it's going to be much harder to go faster than you guys did. Sure. The average speed would also have to be nuts. That's true. <laughs> Every minute that is shaved off the cannonball record makes it that much harder to shave another minute off. Right. And if you look at the the curve over time of the cannonball records, it's certainly, it's a reverse hockey stick. So we're talking about likely incremental advances at this point. Now we say that, but the last three records were like an hour a piece or more. Um, I think it is possible. Um, for a number of reasons. I think there is still a conceivable situation where you can get lo- low enough traffic levels based on a certain time you depart, day you depart, time of year, that you will have a similar advantage as during the pandemic. Um, the algorithms and stuff in terms of when you should depart Manhattan have changed. The strategies have changed with the last few teams that have gone. And we've seen consistent repeated times uh, that are faster. Um, A number of non-record times, some sub 30 hours. Um, There's also a lot of technology that's coming out on the uh, like anti-police side, like on the side of the cannonballers, right? So there's always like kind of a, a scale that moves back and forth in terms of whether the uh, cat or the mouse has the advantage <laughs> in technology. And I think in the early 2000s or the 90s, the mouse had the advantage. And then laser came out and instant on radar and then the variable pulse rate laser and that gave the cat the advantage. And I think it's moving back with a lot of the technology that's out there that it's in favor of the cannonballers again. And there's some some proprietary the technology that I've seen that is really, really cool that I wish we had um, that I think will be an advantage. But again, each of these pieces of technology is an incremental advantage, but it's also a distraction, right? Um, Ed Bullion said it best that like every anti-police device you have in the car is just a reason for you to slow down, right? Because it's a false alert, a false alert, a false alert. So it's just giving you reasons to slow down instead of just driving fast. Um, Arnie has said a bunch of times that he doesn't think it's possible to beat it 
using the same philosophy that we did it, essentially doing it safely and in a manner that doesn't affect or upset any other drivers, right? There's some people that want to do a balls to the wall type run where they're passing on shoulders and just no dis, uh, sorry, complete disregard for everybody else on the road. That's not in the spirit of cannonball, despite what the public perception may be. So, but I don't think that strategy actually works anyway, because you do that for too long and you're either going to wreck or get arrested. So there's just strategic advantage to not driving like a moron on a cannonball, <laughs> as well as just not driving like a moron, because that's not what we do. I think what a lot of people don't think about, too, unless you're in the community, is that distance so many things can happen. So many traffic jams, so many accidents. That's correct. So, it, you know, maybe if you're driving an hour, going on the shoulder or making stupid maneuvers can make you faster. But over that amount of time, because you've mentioned a lot how like bathroom breaks and fuel stops like don't mean anything. You you spent what, 25, less than 25 minutes? Yes. On your total. run? Cumulative. Wow. Yeah, woohoo, shave a minute off that. Like, yes, it's a minute lower, but like, that's not where right. the gains are to be made. Right. It's just driving faster. And driving faster at those speeds is, we'll just say it straight, it's incredibly dangerous. It has yeah. to be done with the utmost care. Um, and the more cars are on the road, the harder that is to do, which that was the beauty of the pandemic is that we could leave at a certain time that two thirds of the drive, there was very few cars. We could maintain incredible cruising speeds without being a danger to anybody else because there really wasn't anybody else. Um, I think it can be beaten. I think it's going to be extremely hard and it's going to take essentially a perfect run, which is what Ed Bullion talked about in his book. He thought it would take to beat his record. Um, he was wrong because we had a bunch of setbacks <laughs> on our run. We still beat his record. Turns out we just needed to drive faster. But I think at this point, yes, you have to have just nothing go wrong in terms of outside variables. And that's very hard. Like you said, across 2,800 miles, like the odds are just against you. I go to like, you know, Southern Ohio. I can't get there without a detour or some sort of slowdown or delay. So literally, I think everything has to go nearly perfectly. I think it is possible. And of course, you know, the key here is just, Anybody attempting it, you've got to uphold the record of safety. 125 years, 120 years of transcontinental records and an unbroken safety record. You know, this is not about just, you know, throwing caution into the wind. This is about doing it properly. So I think it can be done. I'm sure it will be done at some point. I hope it isn't. <laughs> I'd love to hold the record forever, but I, I think it can be done. And, and whoever does it, uh, I think will have a whole new level of story to tell in terms of the planning, the algorithms, and the technology, and some new advantage that they've found. And that's the beauty of the cannonball is a constant innovation uh, in all aspects of planning the record. And now, lovely listeners, it is time for the props and flops brought to you by Switch Cars. Switch Cars is the enthusiast's dealership where we buy, sell, consign, and ooh, that's all. There was another thing there previously, and I've just kind of, it's in my head. Uh, but we only do that to cars we like ourselves. So check out our handpicked inventory at switchcars.com and mention SwitchCast for special pricing. Find out more information on the beautifully redesigned switchcars.com or come visit our showroom in a lovely Twinsburg, Ohio. And Doug, uh, what is our pick of the week? Well, speaking of cobalt blue gt3s oh, oh no uh yes we have a cobalt blue 997.1 gt3 a 2008 with 65,000 miles that's high mileage could be a turo rental uh yes if it was a 996 tyler would be buying it but it has the <laughs> less ugly headlights so you know he he can't do it tyler it also Monson. has <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> It also has ceramic brakes, full leather, a great maintenance history, and yeah, it's cobalt blue. We're asking $135,000. We do take trades. We do have finance options available, and uh, we do ship all over the country. So the flop of the week, uh, this is a little bit of an old story, but there's uh, it, it's ongoing because there is now a lawsuit involved, a Dodge dealership. And 
and the salesman have both been sued after a test drive ends badly. That's right. Uh, they were on a test drive with a Dodge Challenger RT Scat Pack. And uh, there was an accident. And unfortunately, it was a fatal one where there was an innocent victim. Uh, and the black box of the vehicle was pulled and they were going 124 miles an hour and currently at wide open throttle Ooh. in a 45 mile an hour zone, which appeared to be residential. Not the time nor the place to be doing uh, those kinds of speeds. Now, some would argue that there's never a time or place for that, but that's a different discussion for a different day. There's a spectrum of times and places that's right. really on the no side. <laughs> right. Especially in a car you don't know. And yes, I, I, I'm assuming there's an intersection there because they yes. just slammed into somebody. But yeah, 124 miles an hour, still under full throttle, uh, complete disregard. Um the driver who was on the test drive had been arrested 25 times in the past for various, char various charges, had multiple prior what? felonies, and he fled the scene but was arrested nearby. How did this guy get it? This was a test drive, you said, right? It was a test drive. They run your license for these things. License is not a background check. I guess so. So I don't That's know. That's insane. It sucks all around. We may unpack this story more at length in the future because there's so many things to unpack, but we may not because none of them are good. So I don't know. But that is that is the absolute flop of the week. Prop of the week. Uh, speaking of cannonball, there is a new cannonball record, but it's not what you think. Uh, a man set a cannonball-ish record. <laughs> He drove from the library in L.A. to the library of in New York. Uh, I think that's what you call bookends. Bookends. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he set the record for the highest mile per gallon achieved in a brand new Prius, or the, the most recent generation. 93 miles per gallon. Whoa. Over 3,000 and change miles. Some people average 93 miles an hour across the country. Some people average 93 miles per gallon across the country. Yes. Wow. Yes. Uh, and, and he had a few tricks up his sleeve. So he specifically chose the base model because the prime version has larger wheels, which give you worse mile per gallon. Um, he overinflated the tires. So less rolling resistance, less grip, which you don't need grip if you're going slow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, used only non-ethanol gas. I thought that was an interesting point, right? Well, talk about route planning. How do you even find that? Uh, yeah, especially basically west of the Mississippi. I don't know. I mean, yeah. he probably filled up in California with <laughs> jugs and made it to like Ohio on one tank. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he serviced the brake system to make sure there was minimal resistance. So, you know, I don't know, like lube the rotors no. up. And <laughs> well, you don't need to stop that quickly if you're going slowly. So. Don't need to stop at all. You're coasting. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think he also set a new record for the most amount of traffic jams created. Uh oh, um, some people in the cannonball community are questioning whether or not this is a real cannonball. Uh, yeah, I think it's more like a cannon crawl. <laughs> uh, if anyone was watching his live stream, it would have been a tailgate party <laughs> <laughs> because of everybody tailgating him, <laughs> hypermiling. Oh, anyway, oh my. I, I think it's cool. As much as I think hypermiling is, is kind of lame because it does just like tie up traffic and stuff like that. I do appreciate the challenge of it and the achievement of it. Uh, and so I do want to congratulate uh, this gentleman, uh, Wayne Gerdes, uh, on his hypermiling journey. Uh, we found the story on Speed Society, which is an ironic yeah, that's place to carry <laughs> this story. Thank you for joining us for SwitchCast with Doug Tabbitt and Tyler Sanders, produced by Ethan Huffnagel. SwitchCast is an automotive entertainment and opinion show, and nothing we say should be taken very seriously. We do not give tax, investment, legal, emotional, or professional advice, and the only licenses we hold are driver's licenses. The opinions expressed on this show are exclusively held by the people pontificating at that moment and do not reflect the values of our producers or sponsors. Our theme music is provided by Emily and Ivory. You can stream their full album on Spotify or SoundCloud. 
If you like this show, you can stream it in its entirety on your favorite audio podcast platform. Check out switchcast.live for more info. Thank you.